Hello students. In this video, we'll solve the fourth writing passage of the March 2018 USSAT, The Road to Recovery. The Endangered Species Act requires the US government to identify and protect plant and animal species that are in danger of extinction, while the ESA helps to preserve species classified as endangered Conservationists have identified hundreds of at-risk species that do not appear on the government's endangered species list. So here I need to choose the correct option. And I can see that if I look at the other options, there are a couple of apostrophes that are not required because there is no possessive here. Conservationists have identified hundreds of at-risk species. The way it's written is good. So option A. A species that may require protection under the ESA must first be vetted via a complicated and time-consuming process. Since the ESA's implementation in 1973, 10% of all species that were candidates for inclusion on the list have disappeared. If the ESA is to fulfill its task of preserving biological diversity, it must reform its procedures to ensure and guarantee that the list accurately reflects the number of at-risk species in existence. Now here, ensure and guarantee is redundant because I can convey the idea with just one word. So it's not A. Guarantee by ensuring redundant. Ensure the certainty that. So if you ensure something, you're trying to make it certain. So this is also redundant. So just D, to ensure that the list reflects the number of at-risk species. The ESA considers a species endangered if it is in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. Many critics of the act argue that this ambiguous terminology hinders species from being classified as endangered. Some critics also worry that the ESA could have negative economic impacts so scientists and government officials must define it for themselves, and they often reach for different conclusions. Which choice best introduces the topic of this sentence? So I'm saying that uh, many critics of the ESA think that the terminology is ambiguous and it hinders species from being classified as endangered. And so scientists and government officials need to define it for themselves. So the way it's written is not good because there is no mention of economic impact. So it's not A. Although there is disagreement about the terms that should be used, scientists and government officials must define it for themselves. So that doesn't sound like a good introduction because I should idly say because there is a disagreement about the terms, scientists and government officials must define the terms for themselves. So it's not B. Critics do not always have suggestions about how the ESA might be improved. So this is a broad sort of a statement about improving ESA. It doesn't relate to defining terms. Because the act does not explain the meaning of a significant portion, scientists and government officials must define it for themselves. So this is a good introduction to this sentence because this it refers to the significant portion of the definition that we saw earlier, significant portion of its range. So because that is ambiguous, scientists and government officials must define it for themselves. So D is the best answer. And they often reach for different conclusions. So I just need to say they often reach different conclusions, right? This is an idiomatic uh, question where I need to decide what with reach if anything, do I need? So reach for is not correct. To reach for something, uh, one meaning of that is to kind of stretch out your arms. For example, the child reached for his father. So that doesn't really fit the context here. To reach toward is to kind of actually approach something. And that's not what we are saying. We are saying that scientists and government officials, they arrive at different conclusions. So they reach different conclusions. And outreach is completely different. Outreach is to have a program that reaches out to a particular population or a particular group. So B is the best answer. A more objective approach would be to define the term endangered as the probability of a species 
becoming extinct within a set number of years. While scientists may debate the methods used to calculate this probability of extinction, the set number of years would need to be defined. Conservationists would identify at risk species using the standard of measurement. Okay, so here I need to decide what should go. And if you think about it, this entire part is dependent. And this part is the independent clause, right? So while scientists may debate the methods used to calculate this probability of extinction, and then I need to say something here, the set number of years would need to be defined. So while all of this work would need to be done, the good thing is that conservationists would then be able to identify at risk species using a standard of measurement. So clearly therefore doesn't make sense here because I'm saying while this work needs to be done, it will have some good results. So it's not therefore and makes sense because I'm saying while scientists may debate the methods used to calculate and the set number of years would need to be defined. So while this would have to be done and this would have to be done, it would ultimately pay off. So I like B. Even so would not make sense here because even so is used in the context of nevertheless and this is not what we are saying here we are basically saying that these two conditions would need to be met and i can't delete the underlying portion because there are these two conditions so i need the conjunction and between them the esa's criteria would also benefit from tighter restrictions the act uses only two categories to classify at risk species these two categories are endangered, likely to go extinct and threatened, likely to become endangered in the near future. By contrast, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, a private environmental group acknowledges a broad range of species vulnerability by using three categories for at-risk species in the wild, critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable. So which choice best introduces the discussion in the rest of the paragraph? So I'm saying that right now the ESA's criteria only allows for two categories, endangered and threatened. But another organization that works in the area of conservation has three categories, critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable. So can I say that ESA's criteria would benefit from tighter restrictions? No, that's not what we are saying. We are saying that it should broaden the range of possibilities for animals that are threatened. So it's not A. A clearer definitions of key terms that has already been spoken about that there should be clearer definition. So that's not what is happening here. Stronger oversight. Oversight would mean that the criteria are not being implemented properly, right? And that's not the criticism made here. So it's not C being more inclusive. That's a good answer because right now there are just two categories, but if you make the criteria more inclusive, if you include another category that might help animals, right? So D is the best introduction. The act uses only two categories to classify at risk species, which choice most effectively combines the sentences at the underlying portion. So I don't have to say these two categories are, I can simply put a colon because then I'm saying endangered and threatened. So I'm defining those two categories. So A is good. Respectively, the two are, this is not required. This is redundant because when I say two categories, I can simply name them and respectively is not needed. It's because there's no scope for confusion about the categories in this sentence. These being is not required they are is not required. So just a colon. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, a private environmental group. So the main sentence here is the International Union for Conservation of Nature acknowledges a broader range of species vulnerability and so on. And this is the non-essential clause which explains what this organization is. It's a private environmental group. So I need a comma before and a comma after. So that will be D. I can't have A. I definitely need a comma to indicate it's a non-essential clause. 
I can't have a semicolon because a semicolon can only come between two sentences. And a dash will only come here if there was a dash before a, before a private environmental. But since that's a comma, I'll have to use a closing comma. A comparison of animals classified by the ESA and the IUCN reveals that the IUCN lists a total of 642 at-risk species. So here I need to choose the correct verb and the subject is comparison, which is singular. So a comparison reveals, right? It would be the singular verb. So C, not reveal. Revealing is not grammatically correct at this stage. And have revealed is plural again, so it doesn't fit. Which information from the table provides the strongest evidence in support of the passage's main argument? Okay, so a comparison between ESA and IUCN reveals that the IUCN lists a total of 642 at-risk species. Yeah, so that's great, but it doesn't tell me a uh, shortcoming of the way ESA lists species, so I don't like A. ESA fails to recognize 82.7% of the species listed as at risk by IUCN. Yeah, so that's a really strong condemnation of the ESA methodology that it does not recognize 82.7% of the species that are listed as at risk by IUCN, so I like this. ESA fails to recognize 80% of the amphibian species listed by the IUCN as at risk. So this is a very specific example. So I'm not just going to refer to this, I'm going to give the overall number. IUCN includes six classes of animals in its classification of at risk animal populations. So this again, like option A, focuses on IUCN while I need to look at the shortcomings of ESA, so B. The US government could improve the scope of its conservation efforts by recognizing more degrees of risk and using the IUCN's categories as a model for ESA reform. A new classification system could also be financially advantageous. The US government would be able to begin protection efforts earlier, which might prevent the need for drastic and costly interventions when a species is nearly extinct. Okay, so which choice best introduces the argument made in the final sentence of the paragraph? So they're saying that if we start to follow the IUCN's classification, then we would be able to begin protection efforts earlier and thus save money uh, when a species is nearly extinct. So we will be able to prevent costly interventions. So the fact that this new system would be financially advantageous makes sense because that relates to how we can prevent costly interventions. So I like A. A new system could please conservationists more than any other strategy. So that's not what the rest of the sentence is saying. It's not about pleasing conservationists. A new system could be subject to further revision. Again, the next part is not about changing it or modifying it. So not C. A new system could constitute a model for other nations grappling with environmental perils. So there's no mention of other nations in the rest of the sentence. So A is the best answer. Okay, let's grade this. A, D, D, B, B, A, D, D, B, B, and D, A, D, C, B, A. D, A, D, C, B, A. Okay, great. So we got all correct. Take care. Goodbye.